said, you know, I'm, I'm not one for reinventing the wheel. You'll see this down here at the bottom. That's because I packed and took theirs apart and put it back together the way I thought would be best fitting for you guys to get the basic information you need. So this is Ohio Department of Health slides that I piecemeal back together. <clears throat> Want to make you aware once again that uh, Summit County on Monday is having the full-fledged version of what I'm going to talk about today. And I'll tell you, I probably hacked out two-thirds of what's on that, that presentation. Uh, <clears throat> and then lastly, I was waiting for this, uh, and if you are more inclined to stay at home and just sit with a laptop, it should come online here shortly where you can watch Ohio Department of Health's presentation to the first. It was, I think, the Columbus meeting where they're going to cover it with, uh, with you online. So. Once that's posted, you'll have access to that. I'm hopeful that'll happen by the beginning of December. I was hopeful it was going to happen before today, but it didn't. So make sure that you're aware. Those are the last upcoming dates we have for training. Um, <clears throat> more trainings are going to be coming out in early parts of the year. Uh, I think what they're going to be trying to do is get some experts out there for uh, discussing more of the technical issues. So it may not be so much rule coverage anymore as let's start talking about a system and how it performs and get those experts out there, how to design, how to install. Uh, those types of things will be coming up in the early part of the year. All right, I want to go over just a few, uh, a handful of definitions that are important. Uh, you guys are, you know, Stark County, we. We adopted a lot of what was going on in 2007. We tried to tone it back a little bit because it was so ridiculous. <clears throat> and you're accustomed to these rules, or accustomed more to these definitions, so there may be someone in the you know, southern part of the state that's never heard of such a thing. So home sewage treatment system. We have, recall, we have two different types of systems we work with, home sewage treatment systems and small flow on-site sewage treatment systems. Those are the two. And above that, when you were referring to both of them, you call them STS, sewage treatment system. When you, when you look at your rules and you see the word STS, that means both types. If you see HSTS, that means the home sewage. And you see the SFOSTS, small flow, that means just that particular commercial type. So keep that in mind. That's important because if you overlook that word, you may think that it applies to one and not the other. So what is a home sewage treatment system? Basically, it's what it's always been. It is a one, two, or three family dwelling with uh, sometimes a related structure. So if they have a personal garage, they like to do some mechanic work, and they put a restroom in out there, that's still part of the home sewage treatment system. <clears throat> uh, vacation rentals and seasonal cabins, we can do those under this as long as it's one cabin per system. And bed and breakfast, there's some exemptions in the law for bed and breakfast, and they still fall under home sewage treatment systems. Uh, bedroom, they kind of clarify this whole thing about bedroom, uh, and you should be accustomed to this. When you turn in your house plans, or your, your owner turns in their house plans on a new system, we look to see if there's any rooms that could be furnished or used as a bedroom, because we count bedrooms to determine flow. So what that is, is the potential number of occupants at home is dictated by bedrooms usually. I've seen, you know, 10 people in a three bedroom house, can't do anything about that, uh, except recommend we increase the flow. Um, you know, second one there, dwelling, you know, the primary or secondary residence. Small flow systems. I wanna let you know that these are out there and sometimes they are a viable solution for certain things. Normally when you think of small flow, you think of a small business out in the country and those business flows can, are normally lower than home sewage tra treatment systems because you have a restroom for you know, 10 employees. That produces less water than a home system does. However, here lately, we've been dealing with a small manufacturing plant. Uh, I think they're upwards of over 800, closing in on 1,000 gallons per day. And you know we have to treat that a little bit differently. Uh, small flow systems, Usually, the difference is it's not seven day a week flow. It's sometimes five at a manufacturing plant, or maybe it's two or three days on a church. So you have to contend more with flow equalization on those types of uh, situations. So small flow, very similar, but different because they have a different flow regime than some others do. Um, more than one dwelling can be on a small flow system. 
Uh, perhaps we have a detached building that is used by people other than the primary occupants. You have a small, uh, let's say, insurance business in the country, and you have some customers come in you consult with. That becomes a small flow because you're bringing people other than your family into that, into that structure, and they're going to be using the sanitary system. Um, I think I covered that on the last one there. So small flow. Okay, gray water. Why do we got to find gray water? Because now we have gray water recycling systems. So we got to know what kind of water can go into the gray water recycling systems. And I've highlighted there what it isn't. Gray water doesn't contain food waste or certainly not urine or fecal matter or bodily waste. So we're talking not the kitchen sink, we're talking certainly not the toilet, uh, but the rest can go through the gray water recycling system. And again, I've, I've looked a little bit into this. I'm not sure why someone would want to do it, but we may have someone who does. Um, there are a lot of different options for that. And I won't even get into it. And there's, there's four different types from a 60 day, I think a 60 gallon per day flow in the summer only, all the way up through full fledged, does everything 24, 24 seven, up to 1,000 gallons a day. So we have the whole range of opportunity on gray water. Uh, Pre-treatment, they define that. Um, again, it's, you're already accustomed to it. Uh, redu reduce uh, contaminants, that's what, certainly what uh, pre-treatment components are for. Um, and does, last line, does include not the septic tank, but the things you stick in the septic tank to modify the effluent quality. So these aqua works and those types of things, uh, those are uh, considered pretreatment devices now because you're putting into the septic tank. I think we all know what this is. You know, at, over the course of rural evolution, we we have seen uh, the development of from sewage disposal, which is what we've done for years, to sewage treatment. And now we wanted to find the word treatment train. So that's the combination of components put together. For example. A good example is what you're already accustomed to, an NPDES system. The treatment train that is approved in the state of Ohio for discharge into the waters of state, that treatment train is, you know, the aerator, the, uh, the fail-safe, the re-air, the uh, UV disinfectant, all that is considered the treatment train. So that's an example of that. And without one of those components, that system is no longer approved. The fail-safe is missing. <coughs> no longer approved. The UV light's missing. The treatment train is incomplete. All right. Alter and alteration. Again, we're accustomed to these ideas uh, already. Repair. They're just defining those things because now we have you know, certain permit fees that apply. There's certain things that can be done in alterations that can't be done in repair. And I won't get into the, into the definitions. Just know that they're there because when this happens and it's questionable, I'm going to the same place you are. I'm going to go to that rule and read it. I'm not going to remember it, but I'm going to go there and I'm going to read it to make sure we're, where we're at with this. So this is kind of an interesting concept here. I want to kind of touch on this replacement. Installation of new sewage treatment system to replace an existing one. We've always done that. Uh, the last part of the rule, for the purposes of this chapter, the addition of a treatment component to a discharging system not under a current NPDES permit shall be considered a replacement. So you're adding components on that's considered a replacement. But look down below there. An update. A system installed prior to 2007 that uses a system manufacturer model that has been approved by the director to meet the conditions of the NPDES permit. Let's see. Absent post aeration disinfection and or mechanical sampling can be updated. So now we have this concept of update. You got a system that is pretty much identical to what's approved by the director and you can add components to it to get it in compliance with NPDES. So you add your disinfection, perhaps a fail-safe, or other mechanisms. So we have the concept of update being addressed in these, in these codes too, which is a good thing. You know, if, if that is viable, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, uh, that is an option. Okay, the scope, the scope of the rules. All existing systems can't be caused in a public health nuisance. Um, let's see what else we want to touch on here. All 
not sure if there's much else that needs to be discussed. A lot of this is the same stuff that we already are doing. Okay, prior approvals. Uh, this is an important thing that I know comes across your plate sometimes. Prior approval. So, letter E, in cases where a Board of Health has provided written approval for an HSTS design prior to the effective date of the rules, January 1st, the Board of Health shall permit the installation of the system. So there's your grandfathering clause, if you will. Uh, number one, so we can do that if these conditions are There is a written document that says that the design was approved. So all of our designs in our files, if they were approved, they're stamped or they're written approved. So you can use an old system design if it's already approved. Number two, it doesn't conflict with NPDES in Stark County, that shouldn't happen because we have been issuing off-lot discharge for new construction since 1994, so we don't expect that's going to happen. Um, and, and number, I'm going to jump down to number four, and here's your deadline. So here's your deadline. I can go ahead and uh, allow you to install a system if you have an approved design under an old code, but the permit has to be issued by the Board of Health no later than January of 2017. So what that means is you can sit on that design plan until January, well, two years. prior to, mm -hmm. December 31st, 2016, you've got to have a permit in hand. That permit's good for one year. And we're done. There's your grandfather, okay? End of 2017, as long as that permit was in your hand, you can install that system. Beyond that point, we're done. Can't renew it. Now you're under new code. Make sense? Can you renew it? Maybe. <laughs> there is a uh, there is a clause yeah, for extension, and I don't want to answer that entirely because there's probably some interpretation that ODH will have to give us with that. There is a provision for extending a permit, but just for the sake of argument, argument today, if you're telling people you got to get your permit before the end of 16, and it's no it's good for one year, and then you're done. So that way it keeps them in the clear, if, you know, if anything happens. And I know you guys do get asked that question. Uh, responsibility for compliance. This is the same as what it was, but it, it's, I just want to point this out. Enforcement action. So if we have a problem, uh, enforcement action can be taken against the owner and or the person who performs an activity on their property. <coughs> so a system's improperly <coughs> installed, the owner and the installer are kind of jointly responsible, probably some more than the other. But again, it brings the owner into the picture of maintaining and proper installation of the system. Uh, once again, you know, these are, these have always been there. Uh, these are in the prohibitions, you know, no sewage treatment system or park can create a public health nuisance. And I want to bring this up here. You've heard me probably preach on this section of law right here. Ohio Revised Code. 3718.011. Actually, Ohio Revised Code 3718 is what promulgated or allowed the adoption of the rules we're talking about right now. That was the law. These are rules. Uh, so, Revised Code is law, Administrative Code is rules, and we're talking about the Administrative Code today. But what I want to point out here is 3718.011 is that section of rule that we operate under that says you are creating public health nuisance and must fix it whether that be a nuisance complaint or whether that be a property transfer inspection that one of you all turn in and have found some deficiencies with. If it meets that threat, remember, if it meets that threshold, we're going to make them fix it. If it doesn't meet that threshold, we can't make them <coughs> fix it. Then it becomes recommendation. So those of you that are property transfer guys, when you, when you wonder why we make certain calls when it's a must or may, that's where it comes from. 3718.011. If it doesn't meet the threshold, I'm not chasing the guy down to fix his box that's got some crumbling going on it. I'm not going to chase him down for a softener. I don't, we don't have time. And it doesn't meet that definition. And you'll, you'll see later here about softeners that you may or may not be happy with. So, anyway. Another important thing to, many of you know this, some of you don't. Uh, this is actually in in the law, but got repeated in the rules, and that is, number five, no person 
or pardon me, no sewage or effluent shall be discharged to an abandoned well, yeah, that's obvious, drainage well, or dry well, or cesspool, and then the rest, sinkhole. Anything that has direct uh, connection to the groundwater table. Why is that so important? Because we have thousands of leach wells in this county, <coughs> thousands of dry wells. So I had a discussion with Ohio Department of Health and you know they were saying hey when you find these things you know property transfer inspection you find a leach well you need to get rid of it i said no -uh. <laughs> we're not doing that we don't we can't do that we would be committing suicide if we did that there's just too many out there so the perspective we've taken is when they fail we're not going to allow them to be modified they need to be replaced you know there are some things sometimes you can do with a leach well, you might limp it along a little bit, <clears throat> but we can't do those anymore. <clears throat> because I've said to ODH, listen, I can't go out and replace thousands of leach wells every time we see them. We see them every day of every week. But I will commit to, when they fail, we won't mess with them anymore. They'll be replaced. So this, in, in her insistence on us dealing with it that way, comes from this section. Yeah. What if they're failing but not becoming a nuisance? Because they're I've had nuisance. plenty of them there. I mean, not a nuisance, but we can't failing. get in there and drop but their babies failing. in them and those kind but of things. But they're things. failing. Yeah. About Unless it's a nuisance. It's, not, it's not, again, public health nuisance. I can't okay. have yeah. you modify that thing, but if it's not creating a nuisance, it's not creating a nuisance. I can't make him change unless it fails, but I also can't let you get in well, there. But isn't there a difference modify. between failing and nuisance? Pardon me? Isn't there a difference between failing and nuisance? I mean, if a leak falls the over same. the lid, I would call that a fail, well, right? Well, we don't. It, it's the failure equals nuisance in our eyes. Okay. It's, I mean, it's failure means it's causing a public health nuisance, at least the way we've looked at it. So it's performing poorly. <laughs> How's that? Would that be a better <laughs> description? So we're on the same page. Nearing <laughs> the end of its useful life. <laughs> that's a leech well. Um, I think I might have it here somewhere. A nuisance. All right, let me see if I can remember all the provisions. An electrical and mechanical device is missing, causing the system to malfunction. Easy example, aerator motor is missing. That's obvious. That's a public health nuisance. Anything that's causing, that is a blockage that's causing the backup or surfacing of sewage is a public health nuisance. Your uh, <clears throat> pipe after your septic tank is plugged completely and it backs up in the house, that's considered a public health nuisance. Like it's easy to fix, hopefully, but it is. And then the bleeding of sewage at the surface of the ground that is verified by one of my staff, by visual, and then also, also, two things, also by dye test and or sampling. Those, that's your threshold for public health nuisance. A couple other details in there, but those are the biggies we normally see. Yeah. So the ground is soggy, but nothing shows, it's still good? There's, there's the line there. You know, you do your tile probe and it may show. You that's run enough grade. water and it may show. Yeah, I know, yeah. that's the problem. I just <laughs> talked to the Board of Realtors for two hours on Wednesday. Probably on mine? Huh? The one I just did? A lot. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> but, but we talked about this, this issue, I said, you know, you guys want this all to be black and white. I said, it's not. I said, the day that system went to the ground, I'll give you, that may be white. The day it fails is black, but every other day in between is gray. And I, it, those types of circumstances, I've got one right now, a nuisance right now. This neighbor is furious because the system did blow out, but it's not blowing out now. And, and the guy did some water conservation. He did some water conservation. I said, I can't make him fix that. It's not reaching the threshold of public health nuisance, but it did but it's not today. It. If I go to before the court and say, fix it, that judge will say, why? Right. I can't do that. So there's where that threshold line is, is always drawn at. All right, is there any more questions about that? Dry wells are kind of a sticky subject. All right, here's the piece I told you you're not probably gonna like. And we're doing what we can to try to avoid this uh, from happening, so the bowl. An, appro an appropriately sized sewage treatment system may receive brine discharge from a water softener. Ugh. Unless, oh yeah, here's our outs, guys. <laughs> Unless otherwise prohibited by the manufacturer. I'm gonna stop there. Many of you know I've called you and said, hey, supply me a copy of your manufacturer's specifications on this subject. And many of you have, and I send it back to the people and I say, 
Eh, manufacturer says no can do. And that applies probably to every aerator that's out there, I'm, I'm assuming, because the couple that I've dealt with said no. So we get them out that way. If they're in an aerator, we get them out that way. Uh, on our end, we can deal with it from the permit is issuance or possibly it, it helps them to alleviate a problem. So if, if their brine system is regenerating every day and it's causing the system to fail because of hydraulic overload, we can get them out that way. So we're still a little, I'm not sure how far I can push hard on this. I can certainly do it with your manufacturer specifications. I'm not sure about just everyday systems. It, you know, and as of lately on property transfers, we recommend they come out. But if it's, if it's not failing, I can't do much with it. I've seen it put a system back underground, taking it out. In some cases it does. I mean, it makes it. You have some softeners that are very low water usage, and perhaps the water's not that bad, and they don't regenerate that often. That thing could stay there forever. And others that are exactly the opposite. There's so many variables involved here. We've always wanted them out, but the state's kind of taken a more permissive approach on The iron filters and potassium. Yeah. They, got, they require to come out. <clears throat> I'm, Paul, I'm trying to stay by our current way of doing things. So you guys all, I, I hope, believe that they ought to come out. Well, yeah. But so we're trying to keep going in that direction. I, I think one of the things that can be done with that is, is like with the concrete tank manufacturers and with the aeration providers is to encourage them, if you see that you know that they're going to damage the system, is to have those folks contact Todd and, and give him that information that they don't want that in there. It'll, it'll hurt their warranty, it'll hurt their tank, and, and that's our out there. Okay. Well, that's a good point because I don't know how all this will play out, and I see a few tank manufacturers in the room here. Um, there's going to be a requirement that your tank be listed with Ohio Department of Health, certified, whatever they call it. Um, and perhaps there's a place where you could say, you know, I'm a manufacturer, I don't want this going into my tank. You put that in there, and you give me a good out. <laughs> so that, that may be a way to do that. That, that issue is going to parse itself out over the next several months. Okay. We already talked a little bit about this, but I'm going to go ahead and hit it one more time uh, so you guys are familiar. Uh, you know what to do in the next, well, it's not even months anymore. It's a handful of weeks now. Uh, contractors are required to register, and those people are installers, septage haulers, and service providers. The stat, some people uh, were concerned that soil evaluators and designers should be registering. The statute, the enabling law, didn't allow that to happen. So when you write rules under that law, you can't go farther than what the law says. So they didn't put that in there. There are some credentialing that, that are necessary for those individuals, but they're not required to be registered. Okay, service provider. Now, there, there's a definition for installers, a definition for hauler, a definition for service provider. Uh, and, and they're what you're used to. But I did want to say that they added a little piece here, which is very consistent with what we've done in this county for the registration of those of you that do uh, the property transfer inspections. And that is, they added some terms. Any person who services, that was always there, monitors or evaluates or samples. So. We were right in line with what we were doing with having registration for those of you who do those types of inspections. And then the other thing I want to point out here is samples. If you're a laboratory who's running around doing sampling for NPDES systems, you're now a service provider if you want to continue doing that, like it or not. That's, that's the position they took. Um, and I can see why, because it can be done so many different ways and so many <coughs> different ways improperly. So I think there's at least some kind of, you know, level of performance expected there. Um, monitoring, now let's just go through it. The activity of verifying performance requirements and many and may include, but is not limited to, sampling of effluent or inspection of sewage treatment system component, which is what uh, many of you do. For the purpose of this chapter, monitoring activities shall be conducted either by the Board of Health, us, or by the registered service provider. So pretty much that whole monitoring piece is really given to us and those of you who sit in the room who are service providers. And that again is in line with how we've dealt with our O&M program and the aerobic systems. It's in line with how we've dealt with property transfer. So I'm, I'm glad that this is, 
This may be new to some people in the state, but this isn't terribly new to us. And the last one just reinforces uh, what we've always done here. Sewage treatment system inspection for real estate transactions must register as a service provider. You already know that's what's going on. Okay, registration. Contractor must register annually with the Board of Health in each district they work in. So your registration, unfortunately, is not statewide. It is county specific. Um, in case you're wondering, we, you know, no one's ever asked this question, but that next bullet point, registration is not required for a subcontractor that you are using as an installer, but they should have their state license for as a plumber, electrician, whatever the case may be. And if, you know, plumbing is one that I deal with more frequently, and that person not only should be licensed by the state, but also registered by the county that they're doing work in if they have a plumbing program. Um, we get a lot of people who, are, who call themselves plumbers, and probably the better term would be hacks. And, uh, you know, we... That seems blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen people with no vents, venting that goes directly into the, into the living space of the house. It, it's ridiculous what we've seen that some of these <coughs> plumbers do. And, and we do, put my other hat on, we do take that seriously. When we see that happen, there, we take enforcement action against plumbers who do that stuff. We can't catch everybody. We know a lot of plumbing goes on out there with, without permits, without registrations. But when we do catch it, we take it serious. In fact, we had a, a guy uh, who got caught twice. You get, you get one warning, and the second time, he got caught twice. We took him to court. And the judge said, you do one stick of pipe more in this county, you're going to jail. That guy, he, he quit. <laughs> so it, he had actually, it, he took it to the extreme. He plumbed a daycare. So <laughs> he just plumbed well, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. Yes. Wow. I have a question about the uh, registration for uh, service providers, okay. for labs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, if they have to register as a service provider to go out and sample, and they are a lab, mm -hmm. that's all they do. Yeah. And they're sampling all these different types of systems. Mm -hmm. Do they have to have a certification from that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Probably not the whole system, but they probably should be speaking to you about how they should properly <coughs> sample it. As, as those of you who do sampling know, the Ohio Department of Health has sample sampling guidance documents available to them too. So if, if I'm a smart person, I'm going to go say, hey, you know, wastewater solutions, I'd, I'd like to do some sampling. I'd like to work with you. Can you show me the best way? Here's my stuff I got from ODH. I don't see that they're going to have to have full credentials to service that unit. They're not servicing, they're just sampling. But that's just my estimation of it. But when you fill out your paperwork to mm -hmm. sign up as a service provider, you ask on there yeah. what systems are you allowed to be a service provider of. Yes. So if you're just a lab sampling that and you're staying in yeah. that direction. Yeah. Then well, and Renee, we'll have to probably clean that up some. I, you know, this is kind of new. I, you know, they, they haven't done this before, so I'm not quite sure how that, at the end of the day, is going to get <clears> handled. But that's my estimation. Okay. How labs would be handled. Um, Please don't take that to the bank, though. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. And then they, one other question that kind of goes with that. Someone that's just a um, real estate inspector, yeah. how is that going to play in with that? Because are they considered service providers? They are. And then, you know, when they're out like, inspecting the yeah. system out there? Yeah. They're not, so, I think maybe the key, I, I'm thinking as you're talking, I think that the key may be the difference between servicing and evaluating. You know, certainly they ought to know something to evaluate the system, but they're not servicing the system. They're evaluating the system and, and how the effluent looks and so forth. So I, that's probably where some of those lines are going to be drawn. I've not heard exactly what they're going to do with that, but that's a good question. Something as this whole thing develops, there's not answers to everything, but as it develops, I think, I'm hopeful they're going to take a common sense approach to it. We'll see. Okay, so registration. <coughs> uh, testing. <coughs> a contractor must provide proof of the testing. We've already talked about the testing and where those things will be 
uh, you'll be able to take care of that. So local health departments, many of them around here are doing that. Uh, OTCO is offering it, and then the online test, which is called Ohio Train, should be hopefully available soon. Um, and like I said, keep your eyes on the website, that contractor page website, and hopefully you'll begin to see that Ohio Train become available and instructions on how to use it. You'll need to read the instructions. <laughs> I've been there, I sit there like, oh. It is a little frustrating to log into the thing. Okay. <clears throat> The thing that was added that at least Stark County we've not done in the past is not only do you, are you required to maintain a surety bond, but also a proof of $500,000 general liability insurance. You'll have to submit that with your registration for us to be able to register. <coughs> uh, the second one, the bond, they are statewide bonds. You can present that bond to any county you go to, and a copy is to be, and they'll give you instructions on the how to do this on that web page I showed you, um, you'll end up sending a copy to Ohio Department of Health. They'll maintain a copy of your bond as well, and not just the local health department. So what are the bonding requirements? Uh, pr predominantly, we're going to talk about this line here. So for an installer, your bonding requirement is $40,000 for a bond. Now recall, our old bond was $25,000, but that was just for us. Now you're doing $40,000 for the whole state. So, yes. Okay. Are we double dipping? Because um, I have 25000 for Stark County, but I'm also paying for the other bond because we're licensed <coughs> well inspectors. And I've already issued that bond and sent it on in with my renewal this year. And with the 500000 general liability, they ask for every year when you renew. Yeah. So I've already had one bond issued to them. Am I going to have the to... The state health department? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're affecting all them. I'm going to tell you that based on what I've read here, that every cat right here, each category is a, is a different bond. Okay, well, I've got the 25, and I've already paid the state with the earth. They require their bond, like you're talking about. Yes. And yeah. renewed our license. The water today. bond. The water bond. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But the sewage bond hasn't been done yet. How would you think? This is done? my one I get every year for you. I've already had that one. Yeah, year. that's no good. So the because the county good. bonds are out the door. The state okay. bonds, yeah, you want to go back to your bonding company. I can't even take that anymore. Okay. Uh, yeah. You tell them to change it to the state. Change it to the state bond and then whatever adjustments they need to make. And well, we'll get to that. Service provider is $25,000. Right. So same amount, just different format with the state bonding versus us. It's probably the same bond that I sent down to Columbus. Yeah. It's different. You want to get on their website, that, that website I showed you early on. The contractor page and it's there you can open up and download the bond forms for each of those different categories so definitely go there and get a copy of that okay. and send it to your insurance people Roger where do you where do you get the uh, general liability is that um, the bond companies anybody can help us with that I'm sure yeah. insurance agent I just got my all my bonds and everything yeah 25,000 was about $250 mm -hmm. install their bond yeah. The state bond, you have to send it to the state, the yes. raised copy. So yes, raised send copy. The original, <laughs> the the original raised copy. Yeah. So I would back myself up on how yeah. I send it to yeah. make sure that you're saying that they got it. Yeah. And you have to make a copy for every health department yeah. that you're going to be registered with right. and then pay their fee. Right. And then um, as far as. Um, General he was insurance is already yeah. your, just your company insurance. Just your company insurance. Your company insurance. Most people have a million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So your company insurance is what's covering that. Right, exactly. So you send a copy of that to the state as well. Yes. They want to see that as well. Yes. 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 Like, there's a company that we do. Yeah, you can have the state yeah. list in the bond. It's like costing me. It's kind of like a certificate of insurance that you give to other companies. You just have the state of Ohio listed there. Okay. Does that answer your question, Roger? I don't know. No, no. Maybe you can talk afterward and talk about insurance companies. <laughs> they covered everybody with that. It's well, you know, and the service provider does a range of activities, so your activities may be a little less intensive than the other service provider, but they don't differentiate that. <clears throat> Uh, so anyway, septage hauler, $25,000 bond, 
I want to point this out down here below in the fine print. If you are a service provider who also registers as an installer, your bond can be reduced to $15,000. So keep that in mind. If you do both types of work, they're going to have you, if you do this category, you're going to, you're going to go to the $40,000. But if you do this category also, you can drop that to $15,000. That was, that was written into the law. And then you also see up here, if you're, if you're the type of individual, you know, sometimes I have this, a contractor or a builder will come in and say, hey, I'm going to build this house, but I want to install it myself. Well, there you are here. One system, you're the one system type of guy. And that, that covers you there. Um, that, I'm not talking about homeowners, I'm talking about a contractor. This isn't his primary residence. So is there any question else about the bonding and insurance? So that just goes for the service provider and installer. It doesn't go for hauler and service provider. It doesn't get any reduced. Not, not that I'm aware of, no. Yeah, when I read it before, I didn't see it. And then this is this came right off of their slide. And you guys are okay with us making a copy of the bonds and sending them <coughs> just a copy of the you know, And I'm going to have to look at that a little more carefully. Like, like she said, yeah, the, you, the Boston ones goes down to the yeah, state. Yeah, the state wants the original. Yeah, I've asked what the state if they would do this for us would be to post online everybody's that way I can go let's say I just have the copy I can go there and say oh yeah the official copy's down there because my fear sometimes is what if somebody forges one and gives it to me oh come on get better faith in a that, snap for most of you <laughs> I do does it matter yeah well, you know what <laughs> I know a young lady I won't tell you how she's related to me that that faked her report card she got all A's until her daddy got a call and said uh, your daughter's failing <laughs> so it can be done I know it can be done oh my <laughs> All right, continuing education, same as what we're doing right here today. Six hours continuing education per year. Uh, the Ohio Department of Health should start listing those opportunities for you at that web page. So that page, you put it in your favorites and monitor that web page. Uh, and I've said this before, I'm glad you're all here, but you didn't need to be here. But you're good people, so you are. And that is, you didn't have to do it for this year because this is a whole new format and you are considered new contractors with a new test you know maybe since we are here this might help you with your test so I hope that you don't think this is all in vain uh, but the first year you don't need to have it thereafter you do so this first year you wouldn't need to have taken any CEU so I couldn't require you to turn and see it don't even send them I don't need you to have CEUs to send to me this year uh, here's the other Here's the other programs you can be involved with. Perhaps some of you already are, that you don't need to take the CEUs because you're going to get it taken care of through one of these other professional organizations. So CEUs. Records. All right, this is my favorite. You, you guys are going to love me because this is my recommendation that got into the law. Love it. Some people fail routinely to turn in as -bill records. And we just pull our hair out because we got stacks of files on our desk trying to keep up, get on top of some people to get those turned in. I can't re-register you without all your as-built drawings being turned in. So there you are. <laughs> get all your as-built drawings turned in. Henceforth, you're better off just turning them in as you complete a job. So that way we don't have to hunt you down and then... December 31st, say, hey, by the way, you're not in business January. <laughs> if you're setting them in December, you can give us a month. Get them in. We'll do it start now. Right. Should have done it already. Well, no, I'm just talking about. We're, I mean, we got systems to set this month. Mm -hmm. What's that? We have systems to set this month. One oh, yeah, no, you're, I can't re-register you. Re-register you. You're still registered. Well, I know. But, but but you ought to be working during the month of December to clean up any late months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a headache, and this hopefully takes care of that. So please make sure you get all your drawings and any other required reports turned in. Okay, homeowner registration, this still exists. Um, a person can register to t install his own system. And we can waive the fee, we can waive the liability insurance and waive the surety bond, which we do. Um, 
if they if they put it in incorrectly and that system is wrong we through the process of orders make them replace it so it's not like we need those sureties because we can order them to fix it when they do it incorrectly so as of lately what we've been doing to try to pro to head this off of the past is we actually meet that homeowner and sometimes it takes two or three hours on their property and say we want you to paint it, get your laser out of here, you stake it out. We talk about each component, the pipe, the tank, the pipe, the box, the tip. all that stuff we cover with them. And yes, it's three hours, but at the end of the day, they put it in right. And then I don't have to fight with them. Uh, we've had a handful over the course of years in the past that there was nothing we could salvage. They put it in so poorly that you couldn't even salvage. I had one that went through a swale, the leech lines went. Down the hill and back up the hill through the swing. Awesome. Isn't that how they run? Uh huh? Isn't that how they run? <laughs> <laughs> Tank's high enough to make it. How long has it been since you put a leech line in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as the tank's higher than the leech field, it'd go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if you ever considered this. We discussed this over in Mahoney where they have builders. Yeah that'll actually install yeah. their own systems mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. homes that they're building yeah. spec homes to sell yeah. and they could do several in a year, not yep. be, you know, yeah. under yeah. the same as yeah. a homeowner install. Right. We haven't seen much of that here, so we haven't really had a problem with it. And I got the email from the state health department that responded to Mahoney County's question and basically said, if you start to see that kind of thing happening, you believe there's some abuse taking place, you can begin to address that. We've really not seen much of that. Well, your clause there is the Board of Health may waive general liability. Yeah. Are you waiving it to the home? As of yes, as of right now, yes. And then you could see that you could require it. We could, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't really had much of a problem in recent years, and I think some of that is because we have gone out and taken the time and, and helped them do it right. I don't think we've failed one in the last five years that we've done. Years prior, we did. But we never went out there and, and helped them and lay it out, and then they screwed it up. So, all right. Now this one, uh, this one, um, I should have put a watermark with a question mark on it because I don't really know. I, I need to hear more about this. Um, you know, it's always been past practice that a service <coughs> provider needed to have product-specific training. Renee was kind of alluded to that, um, and that still exists. Alternative, okay. Alternative certi certifications for not, okay, here it is, non-proprietary system. Don't know what they mean by that exactly. So are they saying that a person with a class one operator's license can go out and service XYZ aeration system? Not sure. It, at the beginning, when I was hearing ODH talk about this, they said, yep, that's what it means. But now I see this proprietary in there. I don't know. We'll see about that. That will have to be something that does get ironed out in the early months of next year. So I don't have an answer for you. I wish I did. Well, non proprietary pretty much refers to a septic tank leach field. Yeah, that's Sandal. what it seems like. Yeah. Um, you know, any, anything else that has, yeah. like an MPDS, that's, that's proprietary. non proprietary. Yeah. That's the way it reads to me, too, Jim. But yeah. what I heard in the past was something entirely different because a lot of homeowners were complaining that there, in some cases, only one service provider for a particular aeration unit or whatever, and the state said, well, we're gonna see if we can't solve some of that problem. I thought that was their solution, but it may not have been now that I read this. So I, I gotta, we gotta figure that out. And th those service providers who do the aerobic units in this room, you're the ones who care about this most, and we'll, we'll figure that out. You're going to the state meeting tomorrow, and right. they'll, they'll clarify. Well, that. you call me. You ask that question. Call me. What in the world that means? <laughs> now that they put, you're going to see the same slide, Jim. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they they over in the, you know, Mansfield meeting, they they kind of clarified that. Did they? Yeah. Okay. What what did they say? Well, more or less, just like we discussed, not right. proprietary yeah. systems that are not proprietary to like MPDS yeah. things that okay. are specific state approved designs. Yeah. Okay. But they, they are requiring more than one service provider. Okay, and I'm not sure how they do that. Whether well, requiring manufacturers to have oh, more than when they one. do their attack approvals. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And that's kind of how it's being done now. Yeah. Yeah. 
In fact, we're getting letters from other counties, you know, requesting who is yeah. the second service provider. Okay, gotcha. All right. All right. And see, early on, and I, I don't want to mislead anybody, but early on, that's not the way they were explaining it. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Was no, okay, you're on board. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I heard it different than that earlier. Yeah, the state okay. meeting, they said, it, when they were doing some reviews, that mm -hmm. that to be your class one, you could do anything you wanted. Well, that's what I much. heard, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. But. Sound, from the way I read this, Jim's probably right, but we'll see. 